All aboard! I say! I, I say! Better hurry, sir. Train's about to depart. I've got an awful stitch, Charlie. Don't worry, madam. We won't be without you. Oh, thank you so much. But will this train get us to Truro? Can we miss the 8.15? You're in luck. This is your last chance tonight. Oh. It stops at Truro. Change at Fowl Vale, sir. There's a connection, though it's a slow one. Oh, thank heavens. We don't mind how slow it is, do we, Charlie? No, my darling, we don't. Best be quick, sir. Right oh, uh, Come on, Pegs. Oh. Up you go, my angel. Don't forget your bag, sir. My hat book, Charlie. What? Oh, Lord. I, I don't know where my head is tonight. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you. And, sir. Yes. May I wish you a very long and happy marriage, sir. <laughs> what? Uh, you related. Right oh, uh, Come on, Pegs. Up you go, my angel. <laughs> don't forget your bag, sir. Charlie. What? Oh, Lord. I, I don't know where my head is tonight. There you are, sir. Oh, thank you. And, sir. Yes. May I wish you a very long and happy marriage, sir. <laughs> what? Uh, you related to Sherlock Holmes by any chance? I made my deduction, sir, from the confetti on your shoulders. Oh, Lord. How embarrassing. <laughs> Good luck, sir. Madam. Thank you. Thank you very much. All aboard. Ghost Train by Arnold Ridley, adapted for radio by Sean McKenna, with Adam Godley, Emily Joyce and Anne Beach. My man? Madam? This train will take me to Truro, won't it? No, madam. But, but they said at Exeter Station. Oh, dear. My sister is waiting for me at Toro. There, there, Joey. When I says no, madam, I don't mean absolutely no. You'll have to check. Do make yourself clear. My parrot cannot bear upsets. Who's a pretty boy, then? Indecision of any kind distresses him. Change at Foul Vale for Toro, madam. Thank you. Now... Perhaps you'll be good enough to find me a seat. Any of these compartments along here, madam. But how will you know where to come and find me? I'm not with you, madam. When we reach Fal Vale, is it? Where I must change. I'm still not with you, madam. I'm sure you are intending to inform me personally when we arrive at Fal Vale. I wasn't, madam, actually. But you must. Oh, really, this is intolerable. You disturb my parrot, refuse to find me a seat, and then insult me. Insult you, madam? Are you sure I Give never did? Give me your name. I shall complain about you to the company. <laughs> it's all right, Joey. I'll find us a seat very soon. Happy, darling. Oh, yes. Thank heavens we managed to catch this train. I knew we should be late. It was your mother's fault. Now, Charlie, we haven't been married long enough for you to complain about my mother. Your mother is perfect. A perfect angel. A perfect angel in a pink hat. <laughs> it was rather extraordinary, wasn't it? Extraordinarily perfect. <laughs> Come here. Charlie? I want to kiss my wife. Somebody might come in. We have so little time, Peggy. Let's not waste a second of it. I adore you. Nobody will come in. Hey, oh, Oh, um... I do beg your pardon. No, no, no not at all. It, it, I... It's I shall find another compartment. No, please. No, don't, don't let us put you out. Are you married? Yes. This very afternoon, as a matter of fact. Well, that's all right. <laughs> Joey and I will settle ourselves elsewhere. Joey? My parrot. He's an Amazon Blue. He's beautiful. Isn't he? Amazon Blue's pair for life, you know. Just like you two. Well, I'll be on my way. Uh, there's really no... Don't be silly. Goodbye. Well. Charlie, do you think if you were to tip the conductor, he might... Lock the compartment door. And we could pull down the blinds. Yes, and then mm. I might let you. Yes. I might let you. 
take me to the restaurant car and ravenous. <laughs> <laughs> There, there, Joey. Don't you worry. We'll soon have a nice cosy seat. I know, I know. Evening. Lovely night for it, eh? I beg your pardon. Granted, I'm sure. Uh, could you just hurry along a little, do you think? I'm looking for a compartment. Uh, top hole, but if I could just squeeze past. If I don't get to the dining car forthwith, I'll jolly well fade away. Uh, mind your back. Take your hands off me. No, I'm only trying to slip through. You're trying to molest me. My sister warned me about men like you. Steady on. I thought if I travelled fast class, I would be able to avoid physical contact. I do assure you I had oh, absolutely... Sadly, our standards have declined since the war. If my poor late brother had known what the England he was fighting for would become... If you'll just let me pass, I promise you I will never touch you again. Stay away. You are, sir. I shall call the authorities. God! Uh, madam, God! please, this is really not... No good groveling after the event. That's the mark of a coward as well as a beast. God! I'm sorry, but this is absurd. Let me pass. Certainly not. God! Oh, two can play at that game. God! 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 Are you going to sock all the way, Elsie? I don't see why I shouldn't. It's very unbecoming. I'm sorry. No. No, actually, I'm not in the least sorry, Richard. Oh, Elsie, you are a damned infuriating woman. There's no need to swear. Oh, there's every need to swear. You're a bully, Richard. A foul-mouthed bully, and I'm sorry I ever married you. All right, all right. I was wrong to swear. It's the last refuge of the illiterate. I've said I'm sorry. No thought of the offence you're giving. Can't we forget about it? I can't forget what you said to me this morning. <sighs> oh, Richard, what are we going to do? I don't know what you mean. I keep hoping things will get better between us, but... Oh, they will get better, I promise you. Well, I don't see any sign of it, do you? It's not even a year since we were married. I had such high hopes. I'm not saying it's your fault. Oh, but you are, Elsie. You're always saying exactly that. There you go, flying off the handle, when all I'm trying to do is have a reasonable conversation. There's no need for it. Yes, there is. Every need. You never seem to think how I'm feeling, what I'm going through... I'm under enormous pressure. I know things are difficult with the company just at the moment, but why do you have to bring it home with you? Do you think I'm some kind of automaton? Oh, of course not. I can't just flick a switch and turn off my feelings, you know. You're implying that I can, I well, suppose. Well, yes, so... Oh, yes. So damn self-reliant. If you'd wanted a little housewife, you should have married a mouse. I've never been a mouse, Richard. No. I thought you loved me precisely because of that. You're twisting everything I say. Then stop shouting and tell me. What you're feeling, what you're thinking, I want to understand. I'm not sure you can understand. Oh, thank you for your confidence in me. Look, I... Oh, look here. This business at the company, it, it, it was damned inconvenient. Parkinson suddenly dying like that. Inconvenient? Yeah. Oh, yes, I imagine that's how his wife and children felt, too. Oh, I didn't oh, mean honestly, to say... Oh, honestly, Richard. And is it really so difficult to find another works manager? Yes, actually. I need an expert. A man I can trust not to lose his head in an emergency. And because you can't find one, you shout at me. I'm sorry. Well, that's something, I suppose. I never again want to go through what happened this morning. I'm sorry I lost my temper. It won't happen again. <laughs> I see very little evidence to support that. Well, you must admit you were being very exasperating this morning. Oh, it's my fault, of course, that you behave like a pig. I didn't say that. I'm tired of this. So am I. <sighs> I shall complain to the company. Madam, I'm merely trying to establish the chain of events. You are upsetting my parents. It's perfectly simple, old chap. I was merely trying to make my way to the restaurant car. He touched me. I did not. Madam, Don't please. Don't believe a word he speak. says. He is probably a member of the Liberal Party. I was trying to slip past. He touched me. Where did he touch you, madam? Here, in this very corridor. Oh, no, 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 no. I mean, the, the whereabouts on your person. Oh, oh. Dare you? Oh, dear, oh, dear. I simply wanted some supper. A touch of the old immovable object and irresistible force, eh? Are you referring to me, sir, as an object? Take that. Ow, madam. You saw that? She struck me. She did indeed, sir. I shall complain to the company. I shall complain to my member of parliament. I'm sure there will be no need for that. Now, madam, if you would let the gentleman pass, uh, you won't be pressing charges, oh, Of course not. Uh, dash it. 
I won't get a table now. Then I'm sure we can forget this little unpleasant nurse. Is that your final word on the matter? It is. I despair for the future if you can take the word of a man dressed like that over that of a respectable woman. Uh, don't you like the outfit? Oh, <gasps> come, Joey. We will find ourselves a seat. Elsie, please. Don't let's go over and over it. I think it's best we keep to our arrangement. What? We don't get on and we never shall. Tomorrow morning I'll go straight back up to London and you must arrange for a separation. It does seem an awful pity. It was your idea, Richard. Yes, but Well, there I... we are then. I was in a temper. We were both in a temper. I never lose my temper. Oh, for heaven's sake! Oh, it's no good, Richard. You're nothing but a caveman. Even cavemen have their uses. <laughs> your manly strength is of no interest to me, because I can look after myself. We're absolutely unsuited to each other. I'm beginning to think you're right. And I won't be domineered, Richard, and I don't need your protection. I've never been afraid of anything in my life. Well, you should be afraid, Elsie. You should be very apprehensive indeed, you spoilt little cat. Ah! Well, excuse me. Because I'm coming damn close to striking you. Sir, kindly refrain from such language in front of my parrot. Well, I... Come along, Joey. It all. Oh, give it up as a bad job, Richard. <laughs> I'm going to the dining car. That's right. Run away. Well, I won't stay here to be threatened. You know I've never hurt you. But you have hurt me, Richard. You have hurt me. Well, am I expected to dine alone? If we're to be separated, you might as well get used to it. Oh, you brute! Damn! 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 The steak and kidney pudding for me, please, and the sole for my wife. Yes, sir. Oh, and we'll have half a bottle of the... You prefer Sauterne to Chablis, don't you, darling? I'm quite happy with water, Charlie. Ah, the Sauterne, then. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. I can't afford it. Don't be silly. It's our wedding day. Ah, shh. This week has to be special, Peggy. I want you to remember every minute of it. I'll remember it, whether we have wine or not. Oh, no. Good Lord. Oh, look where you're going, can't you? Oh, dear. Oh, sorry, oh, sorry. Never mind, dear lady, I'm sure the water. Oh, really, this is too bad. And that wasn't the waiter's fault. What a dreadful man. That waiter must have been drinking. Oh, oh hello, is the seat taken? You again? Yes, hello. Don't you dare sit there. Uh, it's almost the only seat not taken. It is taken. Uh, by whom? Uh, it's none of your business, young man. <laughs> I say, is he an Amazon blue top O? Kindly seat yourself elsewhere. Oh, sorrow, sorrow. Silly Teddy's gone and upset the lazy. Oh, he's coming this way. Don't look at him. Hi, ho. Have to join you chaps out here. Blotted my copybook everywhere else. Uh, it, it really is a... Don't fret. I don't mind a bit. Teddy D. Hello. Well, really. Uh, just married, Charles. M my dear fellow, I've uh, still got a bit of confetti in your air, dear chap. So you're either just married or you're the best man running off with the chief bridesmaid. Oh, Charles. Oh, don't be offended, dear lady. It won't disturb you. Confetti gets everywhere, doesn't it? I expect you'll find that out later. Let's go, Charles. Uh, I haven't got a newspaper, have you, by any forlorn hope? I really must. No, oh, that's a shame. Fascinating shenanigans going on in Chicago. Al Capone and Mrs. Charles. There's a young woman over there who's really stirring things up. Really? Chicago Sal, the unbobbed, red-haired Jane. Call the guard, Charlie. Have to wait for tomorrow's installment in the jolly old news of the world, then. I say, it's too hot in here. Budge over, dear lady. I'll open the window. Well, Charlie! How dare you! I'm uh, not squashing you, am I, dear lady? Just can't quite get the catch. Ah! God! What's that ruckus about? <laughs> There we are. Oh! Oh! Oh, close that window, sir! How dare you insult my wife! What's all the fuss about? Nothing like a good blow. Fresher! I say, how jolly! You can see all the sparks from the... Oh! Oh! What? What, what is it? Let me get him off me. Peggy, now look here! My hat! My hat's blown away! And I, you have gone too far! It's a jolly nice hat! I don't give a fig about your hat! Are you all right, darling? I gave four guineas for that hat. I only bought it last week. Just a little shaken. I think I'll pull the communication cord. Well, you've done quite enough for one evening. Budge over there, lady, would you? I can't quite reach it. Young man, have you no sense of... Responsibility. Responsibility? Whatever's that? Your ignorance of the world. 
word hardly surprises me. My good woman, I... I am not a good woman. And I mean, please do not address me with such unwarranted familiarity. Let's go back to the compartment. I've always wanted to pull the communication cord. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> What a wheeze! God, God! Did you pull the communication cord, madam? Certainly not. Arrest that man. What man? The man in the dining car. There are a dozen men in the dining car, madam. The young dandy in the dreadful check jacket. Uh, did he pull the communication cord? My sister in Truro is waiting for me. If I lose my connection... Oh, don't worry, madam. We'll be moving again as soon as we can. Now, if I could just squeeze past... I... My poor little Joey is terribly upset. Oh, yes. Children do feel these things. What are you talking about? Uh, your child. <gasps> I am unmarried. Oh, that's no business of mine, madam. How dare you? How dare you? But you said... Give me your name. I shall complain to the company. Oh, really, I do think you're all making rather fun. Absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. Just offensive for him. Where's the conductor? Why is nobody doing anything? Ladies and gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen... It was a jolly expensive hat. Oh, oh this is no, 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 sure it is. All right, all right. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please do not get agitated. At last, someone in authority. Yeah. Arrest that man. Please, all return to your seats. Impossible. My dinner's all over. Well, this really is too bad. Will someone please tell me who pulled the communication cord? He did. You did? No, I didn't. He did. Who did? I did. A bit of a lifetime ambition there. Oh, I shall have to ask you to come with me, sir. Right here. Arrest him. Yes. Yes. It's strong. It's not exactly a hanging offence. Uh, this way, sir. <laughs> There's really no need for this, you know. Unauthorised pulling of the communication cord is an offence, sir. I'm sure we can come to some arrangement. I'm sure I don't know what you... Do. Put your wallet away, sir. Uh, there's something in here which might change your attitude. Now, look here, I... Oh, oh, I see. Um, thank you, sir. We'll say no more about it, shall we? Uh, sir? This is foul veil. Of course I'm sure. It's very disagreeable. Well, then I'm sure you'll feel quite at home. Hello? Hello? Really? Uh, excuse me. Are you waiting for the Truro connection? Yes. Oh. Well, at least we're in the right place. Let's just pray we haven't missed it. Hello? Hello? Hang that chap and his hat. And no one but a born fool would stop a train because he'd lost his hat. Well, there must be a waiting room. The whole place is in darkness. A cheery looking place, I don't think. <laughs> Never mind. <sighs> I do mind. This isn't at all what I had planned for tonight. Ah, uh, my husband has found someone. Oh, no, no. All I say is this here, it ain't my fault. Uh, well, can't you at least unlock the waiting room? Station's closed for the night. What? You, don't be ridiculous. It's regulations. It's awfully windy out here. Ah, there'll be a storm tonight. Joey isn't used to this at all. We'll only be here until the next train. I keep on telling this here fella there ain't no next train. What? Ain't no more trains till seven tomorrow morning. But I simply must get this young lady, my wife, to Truro tonight. Well, you can't. We must have a special. Ain't no specials on this line. Not for years there hasn't been. Then where can we hire a car? There ain't no cars around here. What? What do you suggest, then? Well, if you want to get anywhere tonight, you'll have to walk. Good heavens. Oh, Pegs, I am sorry. It can't be helped, old man. Yes, but I... Hang it all. I, I mean, just... Well, I ask you... Uh, look here, Porter. Station master, if you don't mind. Uh, station master. You mean we really can't get to Truro tonight? That's what the man said, Richard. Well, then, where's the nearest hotel? Truro. Struth. No, Truro. Well, surely there's some place or other we can stay the night. There's no houses here. There's a farm five miles along the road. Yeah, but where do you live? I bicycle to Truro. Huh. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we really do appear to be well and truly stuck. This wind is icy. Oh, well, don't worry. This chap's about to unlock the waiting room. They keep telling you, sir, the station's closed. If Joey gets upset, he moats. Either you unlock the door, my man, or we break it down. Oh, oh, good dear. show, sir. After all, you don't want a bald parrot on your conscience, do you? Thank you, Elsie. Oh, do stop chattering, Richard, and break this door down. What, I'm chilled to the bone. Right, right, well, here goes. Okay, whoa, whoa, you'll break nothing. Then you'll open up. Oh, well, I suppose I shall have to. Oh. Don't allow station property to be interfered with. Mm. I laid a nice fire earlier. Should still be in. And all this because of that silly ass on the train. He should be summoned, shouldn't he, Joey? Oh, Joey? Oh, I'm afraid the cold is affecting him. It won't be long now. Wretched man. If I see that imbecile again... You hmm. won't have far to look. Oh, oh. hi, ho! Oh. Oh, what a topping little place. Here we all are, then. What are you doing? Having an argument? Oh, not at all. We're all perfectly unanimous on the subject in question. Why weren't you arrested? I had something in my wallet which I showed the guard. Bribery? You blackguard! What will my poor sister say? I'm marooned on an empty station with a criminal. Oh, come now. Can you quite picture me in the cells? Only too easily, sir. I shall complain to the company. Uh, do come along, station master. Yeah. Well, there we are. Since you insist. Ah, what if I do? Um, oh. Sorry. It's well done. Yeah. It's pitch black in here. I like the gas. Just you hang on. <coughs> what a horrible smell of smoke. That'll be the fire. Well, they do say that where there's smoke, there's fire. It doesn't seem to be borne out here. Well, I'm sure that it's a nice fire for the time of night. Just the sort of hole you would bring me to. Oh, hang it all. It's not my fault, is it? I'm not the managing director of the damn company. At least it gives you another opportunity for swearing, darling. Oh, where's that damn fool? I'll give him a piece of my mind. He's still outside. Right. Oh, that'll do a lot of good, won't it? Right. Uh, now, let's see what we can do to make you ladies comfortable. Perhaps if we move these benches closer to the fire. Hey, 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 don't you touch them, sir. They're station property. Oh, really? You, sir. Hi, ho. Here we all are till morning, eh? It's a disaster. Oh, I think it's rather priceless. A little adventure. Something to relieve the ennui of life. We're in the devil of a hole. Actually, I'm quite enjoying myself. God! I say, are you peeved with me? Peeved? Oh, how could I help my hat blowing away? If you lean out of the window, it often happens. I frequently wanted to pull the communication cord. It's such a refreshing idea, don't you think? You don't seem to realize the facts of the case. Oh, I hate facts. Then giving you some will afford me great pleasure. Thanks to you, we are stuck in this godforsaken hole. We've missed our connection. And instead of expressing regret, you lark about as though you'd done us all a favor. I get the impression you don't quite like me, old chap. If I were to tell you my candid opinion... Oh, Lord, no, I can't bear candidness. I'm off to join the others before you blow a gasket. To the pith. Well, of all that... I say, what a mess. I should have blacked his eye. The night's still young. Yes. There couldn't be a worse time for this to happen. Not much fun at any time. No, but, well, you see, Peggy and I... Well, we were only married today. Oh, my dear chap, I am sorry. <laughs> ah, it's a wonderful thing to be married, isn't it? It's a widely held belief, certainly. To have someone who will stand by you in every difficulty. Oh, you'll find that out for yourself. Oh, I have already. I'm very lucky. Give it time. I wish I could. I don't follow. Unfortunately, we don't have much time. Oh, I thought you said... What's the matter? Have you had a row already? <laughs> good Lord, no. <laughs> I'm sorry. None of my concern. I suppose people do have rows sometimes. I rather fear they do. It's, um... It's difficult to understand. Uh, no, my... <laughs> my trouble is that my name's Murdoch. Oh, I don't quite see you. Ah. Any relation to Murdoch and son? Yes. Uh, I'm the son, worse luck. I see. Our smash is pretty well known, isn't it? Oh, it's hardly front page stuff. Feels like it sometimes. I took note of it because I'm in the same line of business. Really? Huh. Well, we're pretty well done for. I'm clearing out of England next week. Alone? Oh, yes. I couldn't possibly take pegs out there. Just this one week's honeymoon and then... 
can't bear to think about it. Must you go abroad? I've tried everywhere in England for a job, but as soon as I mentioned my name... Peggy and I were engaged before the crash. Her people wanted her to chuck me, but she wouldn't, bless her. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I must be boring you to tears, Mr... Winthrop. Richard Winthrop. Charles Murdoch. I do. I say, isn't it funny how our frigid conventions break down in the face of a little adversity? If it hadn't been for that silly ass, we should most likely be sitting on opposite sides of a railway carriage, glaring at each other like fighting cocks. And here I am, pouring out my troubles. <laughs> Charlie? Oh, here I am. Let me introduce you to Mr. Winthrop. Mr. Winthrop, my wife, Peggy. How do you do? Hello. Well, I should be... Oh, uh... don't let me drive you away. No, I thought I'd take a stroll up the platform anyway. Get some fresh air. I don't want to go back in there quite yet. I'll call you if anything happens. Right, Al. Well. Oh, Charlie. It isn't quite how I planned our wedding night. No, but what can't be cured? We're wasting one whole night. It's not wasted. We're together. If we were always going to be together, I wouldn't mind so much. You promised not to mention that. I know, but... If only you could come away with me. I'm willing to. It's impossible. You always told me nothing was impossible. That was before. I'll do whatever you think is best. As long as you understand, I am willing to risk it. There's no telling how I might have to rough it out there. I could rough it with you. Uh, I, I don't want you to have to go through that. Charlie. No, it, it's impossible, darling. I couldn't even raise the extra passage money. Don't give up hope, Charlie. Things will come out all right in the end. Have faith. You have faith in me, don't you? When you're away and things are going badly, think of me back at home with my people and know I shall be praying for you. Oh, pegs. Richard! Wait. Richard, come here at once. He's gone for a walk along the platform. Typical. Richard! Richard! Come in. I think you two should come inside. There have been some developments. I'm sorry and all that, but orders is orders. What's the matter now? This beastly man says we can't stay here overnight. The devil, we can't. <coughs> uh, sorry. Thank you, Miss Ford. There not be no traffic on this line. Everything shuts up for the night. Signal boxes, station and all. Before I go, I shall have to lock all this ear up. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Of course we'll be staying here. What else can we do? I don't know. No affair of mine. Orders is orders. You might go to the farm. Do you expect these ladies to walk five miles along country roads on a night like this? You can't stop here. Who's to prevent us? Me. Oh, what oh. are you going to do? Throw us out? I suppose I shall have to. All oh, right, then. You can start with me. I say, this is perfectly priceless. Seconds out, land one, tingling. Be silent, sir. Sorry. Come on, come on. What's that, Dad? Don't you lay your hands on me. Come along now. Now, now no fighting. Station master, we are staying. Make the best of it. We'll see you don't get into any trouble. Well, sir, I don't know. Tip him, Charlie. That usually works. <sighs> Look, old chap. Here's five bob. Mm. Well, is this against regulations? <sighs> Seven and six. Well, Give him I... ten bob and be done with it. Oh, my husband, the diplomat. All right. Can you lend me half a crown? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. It's been embarrassing. Oh, not at all. Here we are, station master. Ah, I suppose as how I've got no choice, sir, have I? Good man. I was never at a worse managed station in my life. I shall write to the company. I do wish you would, ma'am. I've written scores of times about the conditions here. I've had a quick wreck here. Basically, there's just this room and the ticket office through there. But it's no use to us, I'm afraid. It's blowing a gale, and if it rains, there's a hole in the skylight I could stick my head through. I wish you would. Temper, temper. Is there anything to eat? Good idea. Dinner was ruined. And we know who to blame for that. Sorrow. A sandwich, perhaps, or a rock cake. There's nothing. Except water. And you can hardly count that. How about some roast beef sandwiches with fine old English mustard? Oh, yes. Pass my bag, would you? You have sandwiches in your bag. Or a nice piece of game pie with Cook's best savoury jelly. Oh, perhaps you aren't such an infernal duffer oh. after all. Flatterer. Possibly even some quail's eggs. Quail's eggs? Well, quite a feast, eh, Pet? <laughs> well, get them out, man. Get what out? The sandwiches, the pie. Oh, I don't have any. What? what? Oh, I was just thinking about what I'd like. 
Perhaps pheasant rather than beef, eh? You! You! Damn! Just my little joke. <laughs> Sorry. Young man, do you ever take anything seriously? Oh, yes. May I inquire what? Whiskey. Oh, impertinent oaf. Do something, Richard. Will you step outside, sir? Are you going to strike me? Something like that. Then I'll stay where I am, thanks. At least poor Joey is sleeping peacefully. Oh! Oh, my! Has he molted? Worse, much worse. He's laid an egg. Well, I never. Oh, you'll have to call him Joanna, Miss Bourne. Be quiet. Oh, sorry, sorry. Joking again. <laughs> After all, it is funny, isn't it? <laughs> Don't you think so? <laughs> Whoops a daisy. Right. Seeing as though you're all settled to stay, I'll be off home. You're going? Now you can stop here if you've a mind, but not me. I wish you'd stay. We might want something. Yes, you know where things are. What, me? Stay here all night. Why not? Me stay at Foul Vale Station all night. <laughs> it's all right. It's only thunder. The storm's been threatening for some time. It startled me. Me too. Are you all right, Elsie? Of course I am. But why shouldn't you stay at the station all night? Haven't you never heard tell about this station? No. Never even knew it was here. Well, what about it? It's... It's haunted. Haunted? Yes. Haunted. Oh! <laughs> How absolutely priceless. The station's haunted, eh? What luck. Ah, you may laugh, sir. Oh, may I? Thank you very much. Yeah, maybe you'll laugh on the other side of your face before morning. Oh, but surely you don't believe in ghosts. I do. Ain't many in these parts that don't. Uh, not for a five-pound note would I stop at this station. Tonight. Of all nights. Yes, well, I think you should go now if you're going. Uh, not without telling us what to expect, eh? Jolly unsporting. What is it? A passenger with a head tucked under her arm. <laughs> Please. Go on. Tell us about the ghost. Or oh, ghosts. We want something to entertain us. Entertain us? Powers above. Well, very well, I'll do it. Though I warn you, it ain't a pretty story. Well, Twenty years ago... This very night, a man by the name of Ted Holmes is in charge of this air station. Did you notice a bridge just down below? Yes. I saw it from the platform. Now, that's the bridge over the River Ross. That's a swing bridge. Used to be worked by a lever out there on the platform. In them days, big boats did come up the river after the China clay. They don't come now. Well? Twenty year ago, this very night... A party of people went to a bean feast up in Truro, and they chartered a special train to take them back home to St. Bland, down the line. That was the only night train that ever ran on this line. Ted Holmes was on duty that night to close the bridge, which was always left open night times to let the clay boats sail out on the evening tide. It must have been 11 o'clock when they phoned down from Truro to shut the bridge as the special was a starting off. Ted answers as how we'd go and shut the bridge that moment. Then was the last words as he was ever heard to speak. What happened? It was 11 o'clock. Ted says as how we'd go and shut the bridge. He went out of that door and... Yes? Struck down he were. His heart failed him and he falls down there on the platform, dead. How oh, shocking. After it was all over, out there they finds him, the lamp still burning in his hand. This is horrible. Well, what about the train? The special from Truro? Yes. Ted hadn't closed the bridge. Ah. On comes the train. On down the valley at a fair lick, everyone being anxious to get home. On she comes, 40, 50 mile an hour, I reckon, and old Ben Isaacs driving. But it is seen that when he were just above this station here, something did warn him. What twere the powers above alone know, but he claps on his brakes and the train goes tearing through the station here. All the brakes on, the whistle screaming, and then crash. Oh, my. Were many killed? Six outright and two died after. By some miracle, Ben Isaacs was thrown clear. He climbs out of the water and comes back here to the station. His mind clean gone. 
They say he walked the platform for hours, waving a red lamp and singing, Rock of Ages. Next morning he died, and to a merciful release, six bodies they brought up from the mud and laid out here in this very room. This is quite ghastly. I warned you it was no pretty tale. But where does the haunting come in? Well, I, I don't want to scare the ladies. Well, I don't see how it can frighten us. It was a horrible event, no doubt, but it's long in the past. Well, ever since that night, this station has been haunted. By whom? Ted Holmes? Uh, more than that, some nights the signal bell rings and a train comes a screaming and a tearing through the station with all the brakes on and the whistles a blowing. Nonsense! That is God's truth I'm telling you, sir. I've seen it, sir. Seen it with my own eyes. Some freight train has started this story off, I'll wager. I tell you, there ain't no trains running these metals from ten at night till seven in the morning. Besides which, it never starts from Trora and never runs into St. Bland. If it be a natural thing, where do it come from? Where do it go? Yes. Folks in these parts run like mad if they hear a train in the night. They just say that the look upon the ghost train, I mean death. Now that must be rubbish. Now not two months ago, sir, a tramp breaks into this waiting room one night, and next morning they finds him here dead. The doctors say as how he died of fear. Pure coincidence. Yeah. Well, you can stop here if you like, sir. But not me. They just say the dead to walk the platform. And poor Ben Isaac's a leading of them. Oh, hush, Julie, hush. That storm's getting worse. Oh, I'm cold, Charles. Hold me. I've never heard anything so delightfully funny in my life. <laughs> I thought I could spin a pretty good one with this... It's perfectly priceless. Funny. You don't expect us to believe a yarn like that, do you? I do. I don't think this is helping, sir. It reminds me of another one. The curate at the mother's meeting. You see, someone gave him one of those pink dimpled babies. And that just... will do, thank you. Whoops. Sorrow, sorrow. Good story, though. This is the last time I shall travel on this line. I never heard of anything so mismanaged. Is there no proper system of signalling? There's only a single track, ma'am. And back then, when the accident happened, the line was only just opened. Things is different now, and the swing bridge is always closed. What's that jolly old lever on the platform, then? Well, that works the points to the siding as runs to the old tin mine. Only a matter of hundred yards. Well, station master, your story's been entertaining, if rather gruesome. And I'm sorry if I can't... Oh, look! What's look, that? Look, look. Darling, what is it's it? The window! Did you frighten the life out of I me? I saw something at the window. Face was... It was horrible. Come on, Murdoch. Uh, Pay. No, no, go with Richard. I'll look after your wife. I say, I say. Come on. Don't worry, darling. Must be one of the jolly old ghosts, eh? Top hell. Be, be quiet. Quiet. Sorrow. You go that way. Right out. Uh, you check round the back of the building. If you see anything, yell. You bet I will. It must have been your imagination. No, I saw it. I saw it quite distinctly. Do those chaps will find him, if there is anyone. Good beefy types. Do they play rugger? I notice you offered no assistance. What, me? Go out there. It's raining. <laughs> yes, Joey. I wholeheartedly agree. Well, that's the trouble with ghost stories. They're apt to make anyone jumpy. Perhaps it was my imagination. I'm so sorry if I alarmed you. Well... I'll be off. Oh, do something about the fire before you go, will you? Uh, didn't I see a sack of coal in the ticket office? I'll, I'll just pop back in and take a look. Oh, oh what gosh. is this? I saw something move in there. I say, this screaming business is catching, isn't it? I'm sure I... No, no, we're all jumpy, that's what it is. There'll be nothing moving in there, ma'am. No other way in or out of the ticket office. And it's rather reminiscent of a small lake at the moment. Aha! What? There's a sack of coal on the floor. But that could hardly have moved. Oh, you probably just saw a rat. A rat? Oh, dear. That's hardly something to mention to ladies. Do you have rats here, station master? The vermin man comes in once a fortnight. So you do have rats? Oh, I tell you. 
The vermin man comes in once a fortnight. Perhaps it was a trick of the light. There's coal, you say? Perhaps we could build up the fire. Uh, won't get much of a fire out of that, I fear. Soaking wet. We'll all end up kippered by morning. <laughs> oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Oh, please don't be upset, Miss Bourne. This is all my fault. My dear sister of Truro will be sitting up all night for me. And here I am on the cold railway station with ghosts and things all over the place. And, and all you can do is stand there and laugh. I warned thee when he first came. That Foul Vale Station was no pleasant place to spend the night. Find anything? Nothing. There's nobody here. Oh, damn that old fool and his silly stories. Uh, will your wife be all right? Oh, I'm sure. Peggs is pretty plucky at heart. She's not a mouse, you know. <laughs> what did I say? Nothing. Nothing at all. Station master, where are you off to? Home, like I told you. Uh, Dummy best ain't gonna risk no more. I got a wife and children to support. Where's your bicycle? There, on the awning. I'll be back here at seven to see you on the train. Well, I think it's a bit rich. And you take my advice. Keep in the waiting room. If we do hear a train, for God's sake, don't go running out to look at it. Oh, do stop talking like an old washerwoman. Go if you're going. Come on, Winthrop. Let's check on the ladies. And don't say I ain't warned you. Well, I think the storm's abating a little. Are you all right, Peg? She's fine, Mr. Murdoch. Oh, I'm sorry to have made such a fuss. Nonsense. You did the right thing. Uh, hadn't we better make arrangements for the night? We'll all have to sleep in here, which is jolly unsporting, but that ticket office is no better than a bog. Oh, oh. What's that? Oh, I'm sure it's nothing. Well, go and look, Charlie. You're letting your imagination run away with you. A station master. I, I say, are you all right? Uh, what the deuce? He's falling. He's falling. Charlie! Station is he ill? Oh... Station master. Station master. It's no good. He's dead. <gasps> Look. Oh, I do wish people would stop doing that. The lamp. What about the lamp? Don't you remember what the station master told us about Ted Holmes, wasn't it? Outside the door, they found him. The lamp still burning in his hand. It's eleven o'clock. Good God. It's what he told us. It's exactly like he told us. Elsie. Go away, Richard. I don't think you should be alone out here. Oh, don't be silly. Elsie, I... Uh, what? I, uh... Nothing. At least the storm has passed. I'm supposed to be grateful for that, am I? Feeling better now? I wasn't aware that I was ill. You know, just now. Well? When that fellow died, you looked so... I was anxious about you. I... But I lost my head for a moment. That's all. There's nothing to worry about, you know. There are three men here. There were four men here half an hour ago. Well, that's true. Anyway, I don't need protection. Ah. I haven't suddenly fallen to pieces, Richard. No, no, of course not. And I haven't changed my mind about the separation, if that's what you're thinking. I see. I never change my mind. Does your parrot talk, Miss Bourne? Joey, talk? Oh, dear me, no. I've never been able to teach him. Oh, what luck. I know. Perhaps I could teach him. Just a few words. I think not. I dread to imagine what those few words might be. Oh, don't be beastly. I think the important thing is not to take this whole business too seriously. But we're sharing the station with a dead body. And possibly rats. Yes, but the station master is safely stowed in the ticket office with a key turned on him. No danger or threat to us at all. It still isn't very nice, Charlie. And what if there are rats in there with the body? Oh, heavens. The station master was quite clear that there were no rats, you know, Mrs. Murdoch. I suppose we must take his word for that. He could have been lying, of course. Deacon! Sorrow. Look, let, let's be sensible. There's hardly a house in England where someone hasn't died. Hardly a station where someone hasn't met with an accident. That now. is little consolation. That poor man in there... 
People do die suddenly, and at least we know he was spared any suffering. Then you don't think his death had anything to do with the story he told us? Dismiss it from your mind. Jolly strange, though, eh? It's just what he said happened in every detail. Shut up, you idiot! Look, O.B., and I'm entitled to my opinion. You are not entitled to frighten people. I had no such intention. I was just thinking about a story I heard once about some people who spent the night in a haunted mill, and just as the clock was striking midnight... Oh, I think that story will keep, thank you. All right, keep your hair on. We must just all pull ourselves together. Don't you believe in ghosts, Mr. Murdoch? I do and I don't. What do you mean? I'm pretty open-minded on the subject. I've never had the slightest reason to believe in anything supernatural, but I'm not such a fool as to disbelieve the testimony of other people. Because there's nothing psychic about me, I'm not going to dismiss people as maniacs just because they've had different experiences from me. I might just as well call the captain of a P&O liner a liar because I've never seen India. But nothing supernatural has happened here. But suppose that train should come, that ghost train. What should we do? I bags we stop it and try and get a lift. Listen. What's up? Listen. Well? I could have sworn I heard a step outside. Oh. A step outside? A step outside? Oh! It's only us. Oh! Oh, oh don't worry, Miss Bourne. My husband often has that effect on people. Oh! Why did I ever leave my poor sister? <laughs> oh, why did I ever leave the Amazon? Shut up. Well, I bet that's what the poor parrot's thinking. Imbecile. Oh, I say, I've just had a brainwave. Ta-da! Look what Uncle Teddy's got. What is it? Brandy. Just a ticket. I've forgotten all about my jolly old flask. I feel so ill. I'm sure I'm going to faint. Quick, pass me the flask. Yeah, I, I say, it's my brandy. It's Miss Bourne's my... need is greater than yours. Oh, no, no. I'm a strict teetotaler. But this is different. You should just have a little as medicine. But what would the vicar say? He'd say you were being very sensible. Do you really think so? Absolutely certain. Then, just to see... That's right. <laughs> oh, now I've broken my pledge. Oh, it will warm you, Miss Bourne. Oh, dear me, it's not nearly as nasty as I imagined. I should have a little more. Hang on. Do you think oh, I ought? Certainly. Then just a sip. Mm. Ah, feel better now? Oh, I think I do feel a little better. Just one more sip. Good. <laughs> Good. Oh, do you know, it's a strange thing, but in spite of all these terrible events, I'm beginning to feel quite happy. This is your fault. Oh, do be quiet. No sense of restraint. Oh, that's rich, coming from you. Outside the Oliver Cromwell last Saturday night, I was one of the ruins of Cromwell and knocked about a bit. My <laughs> nanny used to sing that. Oh, Lord, what next? <laughs> Down to the old bull and bush? As I strode along the Bois de Boulogne with an independent oh, heart. Oh, wouldn't you yeah. like to lie down? Lie down, why? Well... But perhaps you'd be more comfortable. I'm perfectly comfortable, dear. You can hear the girls declare he must be a millionaire. Oh, for heaven's sake. It's your husband's fault. She's drunk the whole belly flask. Good medicine. Extraordinarily good medicine. I shall certainly recommend it to the vicar. Come and lie down, Miss Bourne. No, don't touch her, for heaven's sake. Where are you taking me? Why don't you just lie down on this bench? You know, I'm quite sleepy. I really must tell the vicar. He suffers dreadfully from insom... insom... sleeplessness. Richard! Hmm? Help, Mr. Murder. Uh, oh, dear me, I feel quite giddy. That's quite all right, Miss Bourne. I'll put you to bed on this bench. But why? I have a very comfortable bed of my own. She let you touch her. Good laws, probably a first. I've got brass bedsteads in every room. Brass bedsteads in every room? Brass bedsteads in every room with knobs on it. And I've got a carpet that goes right up the stairs until you come to the bathroom landing. Fascinating. And there you meet linoleum. <gasps> That's it, Miss Vaughan. You close your eyes. I am a maiden lady. 
That's right, Miss Vaughan. But let me tell you, my bonny blue-eyed boy, I was not neglected in my youth. Johnny? I think she's asleep. <laughs> yes, I should say so. <laughs> Thank heavens for that. Now perhaps we can all get some rest. Oh, yes, I'm exhausted. Uh, move along, Peggy. And you can rest on my shoulder. right oh. Elsie? I neither need nor want your shoulder, Richard. Fine. As I stroll along the bud of the loin with an independent hour... Don't you start. Oh, we catch a little tune. You might wake her. I don't think Varda's funeral march would wake her. <sighs> Let's get some rest. Sorrow, sorrow. Anybody know a good word, Gay? <laughs> You silly old bird. You silly old bird. You silly old bird. Oh, Richard, do something. Put a sock in it, will you? You've been attempting to get that bird to talk for 20 minutes. It's hard enough getting to sleep as it is. This bird will talk before dawn or my name is not Teddy D. Oh. I don't think Miss Bourne will be very happy. That dipsum maniac. Oh, really? Why on earth do you let her empty the whole beastly flask? Well, I didn't realise she was... It was going... full, you know. Full to the rotten brim. Rather strange, her getting squiffy as easily as that. No, oh, I don't know. She's not used to it, after all. Perhaps it's just as well. <sighs> yes. With a bit of luck, she'll sleep till morning. Hard lines on me, though. You silly old bird. <gasps> Did you hear that? Who the devil? Wait. There's someone out there. More adventures. Oh, be quiet. I'll get it. No, you don't know who it is. I'll get it. Richard, be careful. All right, all right, I'm coming. Don't worry, old chap, I'm right behind you. I'm staying over here. Has it come? I beg your pardon? Has it come? Has it come? I'm afraid I don't follow you. You know, you must know. Well, I'm afraid we don't. I need you to help me. It's important. Say you'll help me. Well, of course, but I... For the love of God, let me in. Hide me. Don't let them take me back. You won't let them take me, will you? Let her in, Richard. Julia! Oh, God, help me, help me. Let anyone hurt you. Leave them on the platform, Richard. Don't get them in here. Right, I'm with you, Winthrop. Me too. What luck. I'm so afraid. Don't worry, don't worry. A beautiful stranger in the middle of the night. What a hoot. Julia! Julia! I'll deal with him. There are two of them. Look! Who are you? What do you want? Who the devil are you? What's going on? We asked first, old bean. We're here on a very urgent matter. And we're here by force of circumstance. Isn't it cosy? We lost a connection and we're waiting for the next train. There is no next train. Exactly. You know what place this is. I should say so. This is Falvale Station. Quite. And you are? Oh, yes. My name is Price. Uh, this is Dr. Sterling. Hello. We're looking for my sister. Have you seen a young woman in an evening dress and opera cloak? Your sister? Yes. We've every reason to believe she would come here. Then she's run away from you. In a manner of speaking. Have you seen her? But why should she run away? Why should she come here? That is not a matter I wish to discuss with strangers. And then I'm afraid we can't help you. Oh, bravo, Murdoch. She's in there, isn't she? In the waiting room. Let us in. Can't be done, I'm afraid. You'd be very foolish to interfere in this matter. I don't take kindly to threats, Dr. Sterling. I say, this is better than a season the one in nine, please. I can't go back. I can't. Nobody's going to make you go back. I must stay here. I can't help myself. Please calm down. I'm sure we What's can... What's the use of talking? Oh, no. no. Leave her to me. Charles, do if something. If she won't come, we must take her. Richard. Let go of her at once. Don't let them out. This lady has put herself under our protection. Who asked you to interfere? This is the spirit that won the British Empire. Tally her. What on earth is this all about? You're not going to take this lady away against her will. Uh, you'd... Better explain to them, Price. Help me. You sit here with Peggy and me. We won't let them hurt you. Thank you. Oh, very well. Another story. Jolly good. Now, sir. All right, all right. You know what's said about this place? You mean about the ghost train and the haunting? Ah, so you've heard about it. Has it come? You mustn't let my sister worry you. She, well, at times she suffers from delusions. You mean she's barking? Hardly that. It's just that 
Well, several years ago, she was near the station one night, and she thought she saw the train. I did see it. You know I did. She grew up around here, you see. We had a Cornish nanny. Of course, we've travelled pretty widely since, but old lessons die hard. Uh, travelled widely? Oh, what fun. I suppose that's why her accent is so exotic. What's the matter with her accent? Oh, nothing. It's charming. She's English, born and bred. But I suppose growing up in Cornwall, then finishing school in Lausanne, and the time we've spent in Europe and America, I imagine. Canada, actually. Oh, I knew there was a trace of something. Is this quite relevant? Well, the gentleman did ask. The gentleman is... I'm a curious chap. I couldn't have put it better myself. Whoops, reprimanded again. You should be a headmaster, Winthrop. You have a talent for withering people. I do apologise for this diversion. Please, go on with your story. Well, Julia has believed in ghosts ever since she was a child. Yes. She thought she saw this ghost train, and it... Well, it has affected her permanently, I'm afraid. Don't tell them that. Oh, you poor thing. She's perfectly well most of the time, but some nights she has this idea that the train will run, and it has a, a morbid fascination for her. She feels... She must see it again. It will come tonight. I know it will. Nonsense, Julia. Dr. Sterling and I do our best to look after her. It isn't nonsense. I know it. I feel it. Oh, never, dear. I'm never wrong. That night the tramp died. I felt it then. Don't let it alarm you. It draws me. I've got to see it again. I don't want to see it, but I've got to see it. How did you come to hear the story about the ghost train? Uh, the station master told us uh, about an hour ago. Old Saul Hodgkin? Where is he, by the way? Oh, with the angels by now, I guess, if he isn't uh, in the other place. <laughs> you mean... Yes. I'm afraid he's dead. He wouldn't stay here. He said it wasn't safe. You see? You see? He felt it too. He set off for home. He took his cycle lamp, lit it and set off. Then we heard a noise and when we opened the door... He collapsed and died. Now perhaps you'll believe me. You think there's some supernatural force at work? Of course. That's exactly what happened to poor Ted Holmes. The body's in the ticket office, if you want to see it, Doctor. Uh, y yes, I, I think I'd better. Uh, um, through here. Uh, yes, that's right. I it's locked. Just turn the key. Oh, thank you. Come along, Julia, my dear. Best be off. I can't leave. The train won't let me. Everything is bearing out my instincts. Now, there's a lot of difference between the coincidence of two men falling dead and a phantom train. But the death of Ted Holmes was the beginning of it 20 years ago tonight. Is this some kind of a joke? Eh? Is something the matter, Doctor? You told me Saul Hodgkin dropped dead. Yes, we carried him in there. What's up? Go and look. What do you mean? If you can find a body in that room, you're a better man than I am. Ganga Dean. What? Nothing. If this is a practical joke, gentlemen, it's in very poor taste, especially given my sister's state of health. He must be there. The doctor's right. There's not a sign of him. But we all saw him. Oh, I've got it, I've got it. I do wish people would stop doing that. Don't you see? It was Ted Holmes. What the deuce are you driving at? It's all clear, terribly clear. Not to me. What did your soul Hodgkin look like? Short, stocky, grey beard. And a face like a sucked lemon. Just like Ted Holmes. My father knew him well. At this moment, I'll stake my life on it. Old Saul is tucked up in bed asleep. I don't see how that could be. It wasn't Saul who collapsed and died. It was Ted Holmes. Oh, oh no. That's not possible to Charlie. If it was Saul Hodgkin, where is he? A man can't vanish into thin air. This is absurd. And the time when all this happened. It was 11 o'clock, wasn't it? Yes, it was. It was. Uh, oh, it was Ted Holmes. Sterling, we have to get her away from here. No, yes. I shan't budge. You know as well as I do that the train will come. You pretend it's my delusion, but I know what you're up to. You're trying to drive me mad. Julia! No, I won't go. You can kill me, but I won't go. But Julia! <laughs> right. Uh, why don't you humour her a little? She'll be as right as rain in the morning. Uh, clear off and leave her to me. Or the train won't come. And that may put an end to these uh, attacks of hers. Do you think it's best? Well, frankly, old chap, I do. Very well. I'm going, Julia. I'm hanged if I'm going to mess around here all night. Good night. Good night, all. You think I'm mad, all of you. But I'm not mad. This place is full of evil. We want to help you. No. You're as bad as my brother. You're just as afraid of the place as I am, but you won't own up to it. I really think it would be better for you people to follow Mr. Price's example and clear out. It's deuced awkward. Well, it's only about five miles to the farm and another half to Mr. Price's house. It's raining again. Well, better to get a little wet than, well, to bring on any further 
unpleasant experiences. What do you think, Pegs? I'll go wherever you go, Charlie. Elsie? Yes, let's go. I hate this place. I knew this evening had affected you. I'm not scared. No, of course not. It's just that, well, this room is so very uncomfortable. Very well. We'll go. I say, old things, just one fleeting moment. Well? Miss Bourne. Precisely. And who's that? This lady is one of our party. Is she unwell? She's dead drunk. We gave her some brandy. She wasn't used to it. I'm not so sure. A capacity like that can't be acquired in a moment. I've had to work at it for years. This does rather put us in a quandary. She couldn't walk five miles at the best of times. Uh, then leave her with me. But what if she won't? It'd be a very nasty shock. It's the only possible solution. I've got a simply topping idea. It's raining again, and I'm not walking five miles in the rotten rain for any silly ghost. I'll stay here and look after her. I think she rather likes me. Well, at least she should. She bagged all my brandy. Uh, no, you go with the others. No, I wouldn't hear of it. I think we'd better all stay. Shall we stick it out, Pegs? I'm game. I'm not afraid. That's settled, then. They say that when it comes, you hear the bell ringing dismally. Frightfully. I wonder if the bell will ring tonight. Just listen. Drip. 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 It's only the rain, Julia. Perhaps. This was the room where they brought all those dead people. Drip. 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 Stop it, please. It's coming. I can feel it. It will be here soon. I can't bear this. I need some fresh air. Let me by, please. Go after her. Peggy! Peggy! Come back! You'll catch your death. Oh, I know I'm being silly. I simply couldn't stay in that dreadful room with that poor girl any longer. Oh, I'd have given anything in the world to have spared your night like this. Oh, don't be silly. We're getting through it together. That's what counts. I hate seeing you frightened. Well, I did say I would never forget a second of our honeymoon, Charlie. And I'm unlikely ever to forget this. I say... Do you mind? Just for a moment. Uh, sorry, but I need to uh, speak to you two. I feel it's my duty to warn you. Warn us? What about? I have a nasty feeling we haven't got over the worst of this yet. Nothing like being optimistic. I want you to promise me something. Well, that depends what it is. I want you to promise that if anything unpleasant happens, you'll be guided by me. By you? No need to look so beastly surprised. I'm not such an ass as I look. I didn't think you could be. As a matter of fact, I'm rather a cute bird. Will you back me up? What are you going to do? Haven't the foggiest. This is no time for jokes. My dear soul, I'm deadly serious. Give me your hand. What? Why? Take this. Don't show it to anyone. Put it in your pocket. Now, do you understand? No, I don't. Of course not. Neither do I. Oh, you'll get drenched out here. And I think it'd be best if we all stick together. We don't quite know what we're up against. Quite. Come inside now. Are you all ready to back me up? As a matter of fact, I was just asking them to rely on me. You? You'd be a fine fellow to rely on in a crisis. Come on! Let's get back inside! First the bell. Then the scream of the brakes. The shriek of the whistle. Louder. Louder. Oh, thank goodness you're back. Right, we'll all stick together from now on. It's awful. Awful. And I have to see it again. Even if seeing it again means I die. Then come away. I can't, I can't. Why don't you all go away and leave me here? Because we're not frightened. When the train comes. Oh, the train can't come. It's not real. Thundering down the valley. We can't go now. The brakes jammed on, jarring, tearing. A dead man lying on the platform. It's not possible. Then crash down, down into the river below. I tell you, it's not possible. Hush. Now, do you believe me? There are more things in heaven and earth, Horatio. It might have been the wind. No, no. The signal bell. It always rings. Oh, but hang it all. This is the 20th century. What's the time? Uh, a minute to 12. What was that? What? I thought I heard the train whistle. It's coming, it's coming. Well, oh, God, she's right. What? A train. Don't you hear it? I knew it, I knew it. It's coming, Charlie, it's coming. Richard. Thundering down the valley. On, on, on. Hang it all. I'm going out onto the platform to see it. No, no, you'll die. Door's stuck. It's bolted or fastened somehow. We're shut in. No, we are. We're shut in. I have to see it. Let me see it. Hold her, someone. Keep her away from the window. Let me go. Don't let her see it. Let me go. I see it. The ghost train. And the driver. The driver is... Ah! Ah! 
I don't think so. Uh, haven't you got one of those, what do you call them, sir? Listening in jiggers? Uh, stethoscope, you mean? That's the chappie. I've none of my instruments with me. That's the devil of it. But she's not dead. There's a faint pulse. She saw who the driver was. She said, the driver is, just before she collapsed, she was going to tell us. Of course. Well, that bears out the legend. Anyone who sees the ghost train dies. Oh, but my dear old thing, she's not dead. Not yet. Richard. Dick, get me out of here. We're still locked in. Then for God's sake, don't leave me. I won't leave you. Oh, Dick. I don't know what's gone on here tonight, but whatever it is, we're up against something too big for us. You really think? I can see no other explanation. I have to confess, I'm pretty shaken up by all of this. I thought the legend was just a silly local yarn, but the facts suggest if it was old Saul who died, how did his body get out of the ticket office? There's no window but the skylight. I say, look. What? It's Miss Price. I, I thought I saw her move. By Jove, you're right. Oh. How are you feeling, Julia? What am I doing here? Is it better? I think so. Looks like it. How oh, my head aches. You fainted, my dear. But... Yes? It's funny. Uh, M- my head is all... Uh, I can't seem to remember anything. The train. The train. Yes. I thought it would come tonight. I have bad turns sometimes, and, oh, it's terrible while it lasts. I'm so sorry. I can see now how silly I've been. I should have known there was nothing in this ghost business. What do you mean? Did I frighten you? I ought not to have given way like that. Of course the train won't come. But the train did come. No, no, I've been here all the time. But you saw the train. You were the only one of us who did see it. Stop it, you're frightening me. Don't you remember? You climbed up to that window. No. And we all heard the train come, tearing through the station. You said you could see the driver. No, stop it. This is the important point, Julia. Who was the driver? The driver? Who was it? I've no idea. But you saw him. I don't know what you're talking about. I didn't see anything. Oh, look here, old thing. Stop, stop. This is a very cruel joke. Eh? Can't you see I'm not well? Make them stop it. But what they've said is quite true. So you're in it, too. Oh. You're all in it. I give you my word, we're not fooling. None of us could possibly be so cruel. I feel awfully ill. Sit down, my dear, and let's see if we can't piece things together. I... uh, You're right. Uh, It wasn't my imagination. We heard the bell. We heard the train in the distance. We were locked in. We still are, dash it. And then... Oh, no, it's no good. Look, Richard, out on the platform. Oh, God, help us all. A red lamp. There's someone outside. I- I'm going to get out of here if it's the last thing I do. It may well be. Dash it all. Scar. What's up? Have you forgotten the rest of the story? I don't quite get you. Who do you suppose it is out there? Who? Ben Isaacs. It's Ben Isaacs out of his mind. It can't be. It is. He went mad, don't you remember? Ben Isaac's ghost is wandering the platform. Dickles! Who's there? Come in. No, don't let it in. Six knocks. Well? The old station master said there were six people killed. Yes. Six dead bodies brought up from the mud and laid out in this very room. Listen. It is. Ben Isaacs. What can we do? Oh, I can't stand it. I'm sorry, I can't stand any more. Steady, Elsie. I can't stand it. <laughs> He's trying to get in. What are we to do? What can we do? Listen. <laughs> it's gone. Whoever, or whatever it is, let's get out of here. A shed, a barn. Anything is better than staying here any longer. Right. Uh, what about Miss Ball? We'll rouse her if we can. If not, we'll have to carry her. Well, what do you say, Murdoch? Yes. Uh, but my dear old things, you've forgotten something. What's that? We're locked in, aren't we? Jolly well can't get out. We'll break down the door. And then we let in whatever it is outside. No, please, no. Well, listen to me, Elsie. Well, whatever you do, don't open that door. If it's a man outside, it's quite safe. We're four to one. If it's not a man... Dick! If it's not a man, no locked door will keep it out. I suppose you're right. Murdoch! Give me a hand with that bench. We'll break the door down. No! The gas! What's happening to the gas? Oh, God, God, the lights go around. Something's the matter with the gas. No, no, no. This is the devil's work. The devil's work. Oh, 
Oh, I'm going to be Richard. Peggy! Where are you? I'll see you. I can't see a thing. Oh, careful. Dick, Dick. I'm here. I'm here. Oh, oh. Something touched me. Something cold. The door has opened. I can smell gas. Uh, I think it's on again. Light a match, someone. Right. There. How cold it is. Come on. Let's clear out. Oh, wait a moment. We won't wait a moment. We must go now. Yes, let's make a run for it. Oh, now, please. Don't you start. Not again. Uh, I want you all to listen to me and to take my advice. Advice? From you? That's priceless. Now, listen, old fruit. Let's not go. Let's all stay here. He's mad. Mad. We're in great danger. We're up against some terrible demonic force. God knows what may happen to us. The door is open. We have our chance. It may be our last chance. None of us has been hurt, have we? What about Miss Price? Well, she appears to be in splendid form now. Oh, don't talk like a fool. We're not staying a moment longer. Right you are, old thing. Come on, Murdoch. You take Miss Bourne's legs. Oh, bide a bit, uh, Prince Charming. What? Leave the sleeping beauty alone. What are you talking about now? You do the old girl in manhandling her about at this hour and in this weather? I don't follow you. She'll sleep until morning. That brandy of mine was pre-war. I'll stay with her. Aren't you afraid? Dear lady, I'm very nearly scared to a pulp. Then why... There's what? a world of difference between being afraid and running away. Are you calling us cowards? I didn't say so. It was a clear implication. You've the ladies to consider. Look here. You've been saying look here since we arrived at this place. I don't want to influence you in any way. You do as you like and I'll do as I like. All okay, what? You've no right to jeopardise our safety. It's heartless of you. Then off you jolly well trot. What about Miss Bourne's safety? Very well. Take Miss Bourne with you and may the marriage bells ring out right merrily. Right. That's settled. Quite. So we all go together. You all go, I stay. You can't stay. Why not? It's not safe, you fool. Oh, I'm deeply touched you should be so anxious for my safety. I'd no idea I was so popular. Oh, enough of this. You're coming. On the contrary, sir, I'm not. But why not? Because I happen to be a silly, obstinate ass. And when a silly, obstinate ass like me makes up his silly, obstinate mind, he usually gets his silly, obstinate way. Once and for all, you are not staying here alone. And what do you plan to do about it? Take you by force, if necessary. I think not. Now, steady on, Doctor. He has a right to please himself, however great a fool he is. But why? Why would he want to stay? Pure cussedness, for one thing. That's no reason. All right, then. Idle curiosity. What about? I want to see what happens when the train comes back. The train doesn't come back. I'll wager a white fibre. There's nothing in the story to suggest it. And if it did, why, it could mean death for all of us. Huh. This train has a supernatural origin. It has, has it? Do you doubt it? And to be perfectly candid, I do. He's mad, mad. Anyhow, I intend to wait and see. Don't waste any more time. It may already be too late. Ah! It's him. I can see him. He's coming down the platform. It's Van Isaacs. He's safe. <laughs> now for it. Take that. What in God's name? Now, come on. Look. It looks like blood. I'm sure of it. Ghost or no ghost, I've winged it. You fool. Listen. What have you done? You'll soon see. Listen. <gasps> it is coming back. Yes, it's coming back all right. I've laid one ghost, and now I'm going to switch that ghost train onto the siding. Stop! Stop! Get back! Out with your hand! Damn you! Murdoch, here! Where's that revolver I gave you earlier? I've got it! Then cover this devil with it while I shift that lever. Right! I'll give you a hand. Good man, Winthrop! The lever! Quick! Oh, this damn lever! It's stuck! I can't move it! You've got to shift it and get the train onto the siding. Come on, push! Oh, come on, Winthrop, put your back into it. I'm doing my best. You've left the pin in. Oh, quick, remove the pin. There, a boy. Well done, old fruit. Sterling, don't move. Why not? You'll never shoot. No, not unless you give me calls. Now, look here. I said don't move. It's no good, Sterling. The game's up. You don't know what you're talking about. Oh, yes, I do. It's the end of the line for the ghost train. Oh, I say, that's rather good. Uh, you mean... Yes. 
That train is as real as the Plymouth Express. Sterling and his chums are at the bottom of it. You'll never prove a thing. I wouldn't bet your boots on it, old fool. But the station master dying, the, the ghost, ghost of ben Isaac. All an elaborate front set up to frighten us away. The last thing they wanted tonight was witnesses. Good Lord. I made up my mind to get to the bottom of this after Heath was killed. Heath? Who's Heath? The tramp who was found dead. He was my best assistant. Yeah, but I don't understand. Who are you? Allow me to introduce myself, old chap. Detective Inspector Morrison of the Secret Service. Good, Good God. God. I must go now. I don't think you should. Not until the commotion has died down. My head. All this has been too much for me. Well, perhaps we should let her go, Peggy. She's obviously not involved. All this shooting, all this arguing. I think my head will split. You'll feel better after a good sleep. Yes. I'll go now. I'll go home and sleep. Not oh. so fast. Bring them in. This way, you. And remember, anything you say will be taken down and given in evidence. Who are you? Who are all these men? Detective Sergeant Jackson, ma'am, at your service. Charlie? It's all right, Peggy. It's all over. Yes, he... Oh, Dick. Oh, I'm so glad you're safe. Wait, wait, oh. I tell you, I'll come quietly. Look, it's our old friend, the station master. Yes, uh -huh. he got you all with that sham dead trick of his. Got them all, Jackson? Yes, sir, I think so. Good Lord. Look, Peggy, it's the apparition. The man we thought was Ben Isaacs. Nothing but white makeup and a false beard. I'll relieve you of that now, old fellow. Damn you to hell. <laughs> Why, it's Price. Julia, it's your brother. What's happening? Oh, my head. He's bleeding. Yes, I winged him with that shot. Hurt you much? Damn you. You put a bullet right through my arm. Think yourself lucky it wasn't your head, old fool. Well, hadn't the doctor better see to his arm? Doctor? What doctor? Dr. Sterling. He's no more a doctor than you are. Didn't you see him take Miss Price's pulse with his thumb? You fool, John. Damn your eyes, Morrison. Ladies and gentlemen, you are in the presence of some rather interesting people. Mr. Herbert Pineway? And Mr. John Silverton of the Silverway Modelling Clay Company, whose works are a few miles up the line. Mr. Herbert Pineway, alias Rupert Dalvareth of Barcelona. Oh. And Mr. John Silverton, alias Herr Otto Schneitz of Hamburg. Great Scott! Do you mean bullshit? Right, first guess. The train outside is full of machine guns. Eh, Jackson? Fall to the brim, sir. International terrorists. And after the death of poor Heath, murderers too. You can tell us about that, Hodgkin? Oh, I didn't do it. Nobody can prove I did it. It's all their fault. Would to God I'd never touch that dirty money. Oh, stop sniveling. You are well paid. I got a wife and children. Who I don't think you'll be seeing again for quite a while. Five pounds they paid me to run that train down from their works to the old granite jetty and bring back their guns and such like. Shut up, you fool. It's a lie. A dozen times or more they've done it. That's it, Hodgkin. Cooperate with us and it will go easier with you. Car's here yet, Jackson? Yes, sir. Then take them away. Right, come on. Uh, well, I'll tell you everything I know. Uh, everything. Only, only don't lock me up. I've got a wife and children. Don't lock me up. Well. No, I don't see it even now. We've had our eye on these people for some time. They started this clay works as a distributing centre for the arms they've smuggled into the country. Almost anything can be hidden in clay. The puzzle was, how did they get the arms into England? Well, now we know. A Hamburg boat brought the arms down there to the jetty and they used the ghost train to get them to the works. Then the whole story of the accident is just that, a story. No, the accident did happen and there is a strong local tradition about the ghost train. I expect that gave them the idea. People around here have been taught for years to run for their lives if they hear a train in the night. But our being stranded here tonight put the whole thing in jeopardy. Well, a bit of luck, eh? You really think so? Oh. Oh, I see. You pulled the communication cord on purpose. I had to have an excuse to stay here the night. When Saul found out he couldn't get rid of us, he went off to Price's house and told them we were here. Price's house is only half a mile away, not five. Then they came along and pulled that crazy stunt to frighten us out. So, how did Saul get out of the ticket office? There's a hidden entrance. I found it earlier. Sir? Well, Jackson? No sign of that paper. We've searched them all. I see. How about enlightening us, Miss Price? Me? Oh, come along. This poor girl has obviously been duped. Where is the paper? What paper? The list of the names of the Soviet emissaries. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, indeed. Take her along with the others, Jackson. No. No, don't do that. I can explain. There's a lot more I can tell you. Well? But not in front of all these people. Other cars here, Jackson? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, then, ladies and gentlemen, kindly allow my sergeant here to escort you to Truro. 
There'll be tea and something for you to eat at the police station. I'll see you there shortly. Will you be all right alone with her? Thanks, Winthrop. I'll be fine. Come on then, Elsie. Oh, come along, Charlie. I'm starving. Well, if you're sure, Inspector. Quite sure. I'm armed and experienced. Hold it right there. <laughs> Not so fast. She's got a gun. Elsie, get down. Come up. Oh, Charlie. There's nothing to gain from doing this, you know. You're my hostages and my ticket out of here. You can't possibly get away. You think so? Drop your gun. No. Drop it, or this little sweetie will be a widow almost before she's a wife. <laughs> if you harm one hair of her head... Shut up! Drop the gun, cop. Now kick it over here to me. The rest of you over against that wall. I'm damned if I will. You'll stand a 50-50 chance of being damned if you don't. <laughs> it's all right, Pegs. She missed. I missed because I meant to miss. Get over there. Do it, Murdoch. You don't know who you're dealing with. And you do, do you? No, but I've got a pretty shrewd idea. That exotic accent of yours was bothering me, but I've just tumbled to it. Do I have the honour of addressing Chicago Sal, the unbobbed red-haired Jane? You're smart for an Englishman. You've only got four bullets left. Enough to take four of you with me. Now this is where I make my getaway. And you're going to help me. Never. Oh, help her. Just help her, please. Well, listen to your sweet mama. She's got more brains than you. I'm the devil's grandmother. I've forgotten more than you'll ever know. What do you want us to do? To stand there nice and quiet while I make my getaway. Not a sound, right? Sir. Don't move, Jackson. That's it. Nice and quiet. So long, kids. Been nice knowing you. No, Bob! What? What was that? Gotcha! Cuffer, Jackson! Oh! You won't be seeing daylight for some years, you evil woman. Oh, oh, yeah? And for heaven's sake, take that chewing gum out of your mouth. Filthy American habit. You think this is gum, huh? It's the paper you were after, you dumb cluck. And now I've swallowed it. Ooh. Go after it if you want. You'll have to dive pretty deep. Take her away, Jackson. One thing before I go. Which of you idiots spoke? Who startled me? Who am I going to come after when I break out of the cage? It wasn't me. Nor me. <laughs> the parrot? Yes. Good old Joey. My lesson's paid off after all. Well, I never... Foiled by a goddamn parrot. I don't believe it. That parrot may have been an Amazon blue, but I'd swear it was born and bred in England. What a night. Dick. Yes? I'm sorry, Dick. I'm sorry for everything. Sorry? What are you talking about? Elsie, do you mean... You love me, don't you? Of course I do. Well, I love you too, Dick. You protected me in there. I've been a damn fool. <laughs> you see? Even I can swear on occasion. Oh, Elsie. Oh, darling. I gather we're sharing a car to Truro. Right. We can start our honeymoon properly now. <laughs> Murdoch? Yes? Feel free to say no, old chap, but... Uh, well, you've been a pretty good sort tonight. I'm looking for a new works manager. It's not what you're used to, of course. But if you were interested... I, I say, do you, do you mean it? I do. Pegs, do you realise what's happened? Yes, dear. You're not going to be parted after all. Here's my card. Look us up when you get back, say, in ten days' time. Think of us when you're on your honeymoon. We're just starting our second, aren't we, Elsie? Yes. If you'd like to get in the car now. Oh, we're right. Oh, I've just had a terrible thought. What about Miss Bourne? Don't worry, madam. We've already put her in the car. It's all right, darling. I'll slide across. Careful. Oh, Miss Bourne, how are you feeling? I have a terrible headache. Oh, uh, never mind. You'll soon be safe with your sister in Truro. What a night. I'm only grateful for one thing. What's that? Thank goodness nothing exciting happened. In the Ghost Train by Arnold Ridley, adapted for radio by Sean McKenna, Adam Godley played the part of Teddy Deakin. Richard Winthrop was played by Christopher Wright, Elsie Winthrop, Tracy Ann Oberman, Charles Murdoch, David Brooks, and Peggy Murdoch, Alison Pettit. Miss Bourne was Anne Beach and Saul Hodgkin, John Turner. 
Julia Price was played by Emily Joyce. Price was Hugh Dixon. Sterling, Gerard McDermott, and Jackson, Brian Parr. Other parts were played by members of the cast. The music was composed and performed by Andy Price. The Ghost Train was directed by Marion Nancaro. <laughs>